And welcome to the Picture Language Seminar. We're very happy today to have Michael Siegel in Toronto, and he's going to tell us about long-time dynamics in quantum mechanics and condensed matter physics. Michael, you can share your screen. Okay, let me see. Screen. What cost? Let, let me go to the, no, okay. Actually, I, uh, I forgot that I mentioned also condensed matter physics because I will not talk much about condensed matter physics. I'm, I'm talking mostly about quantum mechanics, about propagation, about long time behavior in quantum mechanics. And this is a joint work with, uh, Arthur, can I move you a little bit to the side? Yes, that, please do that. Okay. Uh, joint work with the Volker Bach, Jur Frolich, Walter Hunziker, and Avi Sofer, and over period, long period of time, and with the Thomas Chen, uh, Jeremy Popa, and Marius Lem. It's more, much more, uh, the last two is much more recent. So I will start with the quantum mechanics, with many body problem in quantum mechanics. So we, so the quantum S, I don't have to tell this audience that quantum mechanics is described by the Schrodinger equation, which is written, uh, written here. So let me read it here. And with the, uh, so wave function psi, which is a function of n particle positions and time, sorry. Cannot. And with a, with a Schrodinger operator written, written here. So the, so under very general conditions, we have the global existence for uh, such for such an equation for the Schrodinger equation. This is equivalent to the Cefajoritans of of the Hamiltonian, and our goal is to describe the space-time behavior of solutions. And main problem here is the problem of stability. By stability, I mean is stable in a quant in a quantum quantum mechanical sense is localization in space and per, uh, periodicity in time. So if you think about atoms, solids, or, and so on, so that's, that's the kind of stability we have, I have in mind. And this stability is a stability with respect to collapse, which means that the lower bound, the infimum of, of the spectrum of Hamiltonian is bounded from below. So there's, this can be further ex expanded to, to the stability of matter, which I will not, I will not talk about here. And actually I would not talk about this stability with respect to collapse either. And then there's a stability with respect to breakup. So uh, in pictures, I don't know whether I would be able to draw a picture here, but let me try. So stability with respect to collapse, we, want, we, don't, uh, we don't want the system to, uh, to kind of a collapse onto itself. And stability with respect to the breakup, we, uh, we don't want, uh, it means the system does not break into the into the smaller subsystems. Okay. And further, we can re refine this break uh, break up further as a scattering problem. So, uh, so the main mathematical pro problem in so scattering uh, main mathematical problem in the scattering theory can be uh, formulated as uh, is is called the symptotic completeness. And can be formal, uh, can be formulated as as, as the as time goes to infinity, quantum system settles in the superposition of states in each of which uh, so the uh, it is broken into a stable free, freely moving fr uh, fragments. In other words, so we might have kind of a break up initially break up into the, uh, some subsist, uh, subsystem, but then it breaks further on until it reaches the stable, stable clusters which move, which move uh, classically as, as, a free, as a free stable thing. So the, the, main, re, uh, the main result here is formulated, formal, uh, is given in this theorem is that for short range interactions, which interactions with a, which decay at infinity faster than uh, faster than uh, sorry, faster than uh, than Coulomb Coulomb one, the symptotic completeness holds, 
and so once again so the so so the synthetic completeness holds for all pair interactions which decay faster than than x uh, as y to the power minus mu where mu is greater than square root of three minus one so for mu greater greater than one it was proven by Avi Sofer and myself and for mu great uh, between one and the uh, and square root of three minus one, it was proven by Jan Dzerzhinsky, which uh, which developed some additional some additional uh, additional I think uh, uh, which let let me let me make it simpler, which which uh, incorporated some important ideas of of Jean Michel uh, Jean Michel graph, and I will try to explain. If I manage to draw something, I'll try to explain this in, in pictures. So I want to, kind of, I want to. Michael, uh, can you explain the constant? The constant is not not easy to explain. So essentially, the to, to understand the long range, uh, to 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 understand uh, the long range problem re is reduced to the problem of the of the scattering theory for time dependent potentials. In other words, there's, uh, there's no energy conservation anymore. And in this case, you have to, uh, you have to work, uh, you have to understand the scattering with a zero velocity, with a zero energy. And in this case, we have a diffusion, in fact, not a skate, not ballistic motion, but a diffusion. So you have to understand quantum diffusion at zero energies. So this is so-called met meta or or pyre macro local analysis where you localize not not a use in not the usual in cones or in, but in parabolic or, or curvilinear co uh, cones and it's very delicate stuff and and this constant pops up. So when we were doing this work, so this popped up in our in our attempt to do, do skate and long range scattering theory and this explicitly was written in in the work of uh, Dierzinski. It, it came up as a technical technical condition, which and we never pursued it further. But I think it's it's a, actually it's a very good problem to understand. So where it comes from? So it's not. So it's not underst understood in on conceptual level. Okay. okay. Anyways, so let me explain the difference between uh, how the number of particles here enters. So I, what's important when I look at the potential, at uh, the many body potential here, here. The important part is how it behaves at, as, uh, at infinity in configuration space when all particles, when all particle coordinates go to infinity. So if everything decay, if potential decays, then the problem becomes uh, quite simple. It's essentially reduced, it's reduced to the, to the free, to, Okay, to the one, it's essentially one body problem to the free dynamics. So let me draw the difference between different uh, particles. Oh, so kind of, it's hard to draw. N is equal to two. So if I, I, will, I will draw here a unit sphere in, a, in configuration, configuration space. And uh, on this sphere, I want to point, uh, to point directions in which uh, potential total potential does not decay. So total potential is V i j x i minus x j. Sorry for my handwriting. So for n is equal to two, so uh, potential decays in all directions. So this problem is fairly, becomes fairly simple. For n is equal to three, if I draw a sphere, so we have a three directions in which three subspaces in which potential does not decay. So x1 is equal to x2, x, x1 is equal to x3, and x2 is equal to x uh, to x3. So I can uh, isolate this. I can use partition of unity to isolate these uh, sub uh, subspaces, and then reduce the problem to the to the uh, two body to the two body problem. So this is this corresponds to kind of a scattering theory in, in arithmetic arithmetic spaces, hyperbolic spaces, uh, without elliptic elements. So for n, oh, sorry, for n greater than three, greater than three, 
uh, the the subspaces were subspaces were these guys do not uh, but total potential does not decay are kind of a, you can think about they intersect always intersect. So we have a system you cannot isolate it by by partition of unity in the configuration space. So it means that here what happens is what we kind of realized with the other software is that you can still isolate it and then it was refined by it, the new ideas will introduce by by graph. So that the that here we can uh, to isolate different channels, different different be, uh, behavior in a where potentials do not do not decay. They correspond to different channels in scattering theory. You have to do partition of unity in a phase space. You have to take into account also velocities. So if you take into account velocity, then it turns out you can separate separate these different channels, different different parts where potentials do not do not decay, and study them separately. So for this, you have to prove so-called propagation estimates show that in, on a boundary of partition of unity, there is no propagation. So you, uh, and you can effectively separate, you can effectively separate this, uh, these channels. Okay, so as I mentioned before, so in uh, the difference, the biggest difference between scattering theory and the, uh, short range and long range is that in, in the long range, when you pass to the uh, to the subsystems to the do the uh, do induction, <coughs> excuse me, then the potentials will decay will depend on time, and you cannot use partition uh, partition of unity anymore. Oh, sorry, you cannot use conservation of energy, which is very plays important role in these estimates. Okay, so the early, earlier work was by by Dave uh, and Simon, Hansen, Gerard, Graf, uh, and Yafai. So the open problem here is to prove asymptotic completeness for mu great less or equal in square root of three minus one. And this, my, uh, this is even uh, open problem for two two body or one body uh, in one body systems. Just minus Laplace and minus. So I have to. So if I go to the one body system, then I have to, I have to put here, I have to put here dependence on time. So if you have for three body system, this is open problem. And for three body system, it's, it's reduced to the one body system with the time dependent potentials. Okay. So on the next step, I want to include photons in the, into the hour, into the hour, uh, into the, our consideration and our system, so we want to want to describe uh, kind of a visible a visible world world which we uh, the particles which we can see. So we have to couple couple them to the photons, and so this is so the framework is exactly the same. So this is maybe the at uh, the kind of danger getting into the hot water. I can say that this is probably the most general theory which kind of has very clear, clear first principles. So we have, again, we deal with the Schrodinger equation. We arrive to the, the set uh, Schrodinger equation here. And with a Hamiltonian, which is, looks the same as the classical Hamiltonian of the, of the system, of the particle system coupled, coupled to the electromagnetic field. Except for the now electromagnetic field is quantized. So uh, vector potential, magnetic potential is, is quantized is, uh, and we assume that it's a regular rise and ultra, ultraviolet regular rise. So we cut off on a very large, at very large momentum. Okay, kappa is a particle charge in certain units and U, U, uh, U of X is a total potential. And as usual, a, H sub F is the photon Hamiltonian. So I will not, Will not do, it definitely would take quite a quite a bit of time to define things. So I will not go into the into the. I assume that this is kind of a. So. So either it's known or can be taken for taken for granted, and so the main problem uh, main 
obstacle is not, not an open problem, but main obstacle when when comes uh, when uh, comes across here is that that uh, photons are massless particles, and therefore there's infinite cl uh, clouds of the of gapless excitation. So if you have kind of an atom here, you can it can uh, lots of uh, these guys are born out, and this in fact infinite clouds which is born out and and emitted and absorbed back into the back into the uh, into the uh, by particles. So the main the main key problems here are emissions and absorption of electromagnetic radiation. So mathematically, the process of emission and absorption of electromagnetic radiation can be described as the ability of the ground state of the, of the composed system and instability of excited states of the particle system and uh, an emergence of resonances. And this is uh, here in the, this picture shown the results by due to the Volker Bach, here for it and myself. So first this is uh, the first is stability versus instability. So the ground state of the particle system here uh, is stable, it just gets shifted, shifted to the left, to the left, and it still is a uh, ground state of the total system. While excited states of the particle system disappear, they're unstable, and, and they become, uh, as a, they emerge as a resonance. So if I look in, uh, at the second Riemann sheet for the, for the energy plane, so if, uh, if can, can, one can define the uh, Riemann surface for the for the kind of for the Riemann sur surface underlying underlying the energy plane. So then, on this Riemann surface, you will have the following. If you project in a special way this Riemann surface, you will see the following. So the this continuous spectrum shifted, shifted, rotated, kind of a. Uh, Rotated around its thresholds, so this is the uh, this is the ground state which became of the particle system, which became a ground state of the of the total system, and there is uh, massless excitations coming out of this ground state. Of course, they they are not wedges like here. This kind of with the the shapes here are very quite could be quite uh, rugged, but that's the that's what the best picture I could make. So. While the unstable, uh, excited states, sorry, are uh, get uh, the they migrate to the second Riemann sheet and become resonances, so become metastable states, right? And the, and the splitting between the so if it's degenerate, the splitting between between this resonance energies is what's called the lamp shift. While the distance to the to the real axis is is a half one of the lifetime. So the so the this metastability is exactly explains the explains the phenomenon of, radi of radiation. So if if the the particle is kicked into the excite is in excited states and and and, and uh, interacts with the as it should interacts with photons with the quantized electromagnetic radiation, then the then uh, at, at, at eventually in the some random time, but with the lifetime of, of the distance to the, to the real axis, this, uh, this state is, uh, becomes unstable, it's metastable state. And so it sits, this energy sits somewhere here or here, for example, it's energy and this is lifetime. And eventually uh, the, uh, the particle will jump into the, into the ground state. So this is this metastable. So closer this uh, these states are to the real axis, longer the particle sits sits in this in this metastable state. But eventually, at some random time, it jumps into the into the uh, in, uh, into the ground state and radiates eventually radiates radiates photons. So the photon clouds have another effect on the, on our system is the mass normalization so the cloud so the electrons become become heavier as a result as a result of clouds surrounding it and so that's the that's essentially results of the results which uh, um, which 
were kind of outlined outlined here, and uh, and the early results were due to the people listed here. So now I want to continue the problem of scattering. So maybe here I could have drawn the picture of the well-known pictures of emission and absorption of the of the radiation. Of course, if if you want to mention here is the our atom moving and at some point it emits emits a photon, lots of photons, infinite number of photons in general, or vice versa. It's it's moving and it absorbs a photon. And of course, they're also uh, emit, emitting and absorption at the same time. Okay, so next, I'd like to look at the, uh, again, problem of scattering. So I want to, I would like to, I will consider, so uh, the Rayleigh sca uh, scattering, with scattering at the energy below the ionization energy of atomic or molecular system. So in other words, if you have a, say, atom, 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 an atom, and it's bombarded by photons, they scattered, scatter from it, but, uh, but they don't, but the atom is still uh, not ionized, it's still stable itself. So they do not break the atom. They're below the energy of the breakup of the atom. In this case, there's, uh, there's the following results due to the general FUPA and the Roy, uh, the Roy Grisimer and Kupianin. So assuming that uh, assuming that the uh, average number of photons is bounded, and this is satisfied in special cases, which were which was shown by as was shown by the Roy uh, and Kopeanen, then the symptotic completeness holds. Again, the earliest results are due, due to the uh, Spohn, Dzerzhinsky, Gerard, Froelich, Grismer, Schlein, and many others. And the open problem here is uh, still open problem is how to prove uh, the average that average number of photons in a in a such a quantum system is 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 bounded uniformly in time bounded uh, for a general particle system. This is open problem. It's kind of a you don't need to you don't need really to do scattering theory for this problem. You have to just understand. Uh, uh, well, but that's what you have to do. Maybe the only way to prove it is to prove first the completeness by other other means and then derive from it the number of photons is bounded, but it's kind of a, would be nice to do it directly with our scattering theory. Okay, so now I want, I want to proceed to the quantum gases. So I want to again look at the Schrodinger equation. And so for you have n identical quantum particles, bosons or fermions, and they are in the bounded domain, in the bounded domain lambda. And before we have a Schrodinger equation with the Hamiltonian H sub n, which now I just, uh, we, I assume, I assume identical particles, all the masses, so all the interactions are equal. There could be also interact, external interactions which I did not include here. So goal here is again to describe evolution uh, of such a system, but in this case, it's an thermodynamic regime. So in other words, we want to have evolution in terms of the, uh, describe in terms of the macroscopic uh, parameters such as uh, particle density, but not, but not in terms of the number of particles or, or volume, volume of the main and which is, uh, which is uh, defined separately. And spe specifically would like to establish existence of a light cone here. In other words, the final speed of, speed of propagation of, a, of a particle transport or, or, or the information propagation and so forth. Okay. So here we're, and of course, when we define light, light cone as we do it, we do it in, uh, quantum theory and not relativity quantum theory is done up to the small probability tails, exponentially or power law or, or in, as inverse, decaying as inverse powers. Okay, so we, we're here we come to the, I would like to go to the kind of special model is a Hubbard model. 
So if we do, uh, we pass in the previous in the previous uh, model, we pass to the second quantization and time binding or lattice approximation with the on-site interaction. So delta delta function potential, so gross Pelevsky regime, for example. Then we arrive at the following Hamiltonian, which is called uh, up to the quadratic terms, which number of particles, which which is uh, the Hubbard model. So this is the kinetic energy here. So it's a hopping, hopping uh, to the ne next neighbor hopping. And this is on-site in, uh, potential energy, on-site interaction. So it's, all, so it's more or less clear relation to the previous model. So if you take, this is a discrete Laplacian and this is uh, the uh, interaction kind of a delta interaction, delta function interaction. So lambda now is finite connected subset of, the, of some lattice in RD and the relation X so similar to Y is uh, X and Y are nearest neighbors in, in the volume lambda. And as usual, BX and, and, and B, uh, BX dagger are annihilation and creation, and creation operators on some Fox space. So we can consider, so B here, with we can think about bosons, but the, but in principle it could be also photons. So that's the that's the I mean, uh, dynamics I would like to consider. So and I would like to mention that though it looks it looks fairly simple, it's a, it's a, this model is surprisingly versatile. So it describing wide range of phenomena in condensed matter physics. Such, such as, for example, conductor insulator transition. Okay, so here, uh, here I would like to mention our results with the result here and the formulate our results with the German Fupa and Myers Lem. So uh, we could, I will consider a number of particles in a bounded domain in, in well, all everything is bounded here in some domain S of, uh, of our subset lambda. So it's a number of particles in this domain. And I want to look at also at the relative number of particles. So number of, uh, ratio of number of particles in domain S to the number of particles in, in the full volume. So lambda will be here always uh, fixed. And then, so by C, by S, the sub superscript C, I'll denote this complement of the, of this S in the, in the volume lambda, in the domain lambda, and and then uh, and by P sub sub n bar less or equal than rho, I I I denote the the spectral projection for this for this operator on this on the interval from zero to rho. Finally, I define <coughs> excuse me maximal uh, maximal velocity maximal speed here as a j. J was the coefficient in front of the kinetic energy in Hubbard model times number of the near, uh, near, uh, nearest neighbors in, uh, in this lattice. So the theorem I would like to describe here is the, is the, uh, is, is the following. So for any, so assume V is fixed some, speed V greater than the maximal speed defined, defined here. And let rho arbitrary rho, uh, numbers, rho one, uh, positive numbers, rho one less, the, less than rho two and less than one. We consider evolution starting in the, starting in the ball of radius, of radius rho one. So it's a relative ball. We're, I'm talking about relative, uh, relative number of particles. So this is a special case, in fact, of our, our result, but it's the easiest to formulate. Then the probability, the number of particles is, sorry, this is a typo. So number of particles is greater than rho two in a state, in a, in a state psi sub t, the case as follows. The case is uh, as arbitrary power, inverse power or distance between 
says X and X and Y. Sorry. Okay, so I, I have to start again. So how I was jumping here. Okay, let X and let X and Y be the joint subset of of uh, lambda, and we define with the, again with the. I will maybe I'll draw a picture here. So let's let's have a set X here, and here will be set Y. Okay, so we we assume that uh, between outside of the set initially outside of the set of the set X initially the number of particles particles relative number of particles is below row one. So number of particles here in X could be could be arbitrary. Then if if this is L, this is between two, between X and Y, so L. So for time less than L divided by V, by this speed V, the number, relative number of particles in Y will be, will be a little bit, could be a little bit more than, than row one, but arbitrary, arbitrary, for arbitrary row two, it will be lower row two. So the, for arbitrary row two, which is, which is less than, greater than row one, so let me. Oh, sorry. Okay. So once once again, let me again uh, go through this picture again. So this is number relative number of particles, less uh, row one, and for arbitrary or uh, for arbitrary row, row two greater than row one, the number of particles in the uh, relative number of particles in Y will be less than row two. So if so, this bulge here will not will not reach will not reach this, this domain in the time less than. L divided by V. So that's that's the that's the content of the theorem. We start we start in a situation where outside of X outside of X, the number of particles is less than row, uh, less than row one. In X could be arbitrary number of particles, relative number of particles, and in a time less than distance divided by by speed. Uh, the number of particles in the domain y would be would be less than arbitrary number greater than row one. So let me draw uh, explain this. So uh, in another picture. So the uh, so let me uh, so the theorem uh, shows that the microscopic cloud of particles moves. At at most with a velocity V max. But let me draw here maybe a light cone, kind of a, explain it in the terms of the light cone. So if I have, a, if this, this is Y, X, sorry. This is the main X. And this is the main Y. That, so then, so whatever number of particles, whatever number relative number of particles is in the main X, the number of particles in for the time less than L divided by V, number of particles in the main uh, in the main Y would would change at most infinitesimally. By could be could be there could be a tiny change, but uh, but at most infinitesimally. However, much particles we have in, in the main X. So that's the okay. So the, the bound is independent, independent of the volume, and it extends to the infinite infinite volume limit, and therefore it's a, a thermodynamically stable. It's, the theorem can also hold for gen, uh, generalized Hubbard Hamiltonian, so the we can have uh, hopping, kind of a long-range hopping. We can allow we can allow uh, long range hopping uh, in the first term, and 
fairly or arbitrary potential in the in the second term. So the open problem here is the maximal speed of max, uh, maximal speed bound for continuous many body systems. So let me mention here. Let me mention here the previous previous results, earlier results. So this this works for fermions and boson systems. So, but let me kind of start with fermion system. There's a huge amount of work. So I will not I will not list them. I would not be able to list it even even if I want if I if in, if I if you give me another couple of hours. But the but the, I just say in few words what 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 happened in this domain. So existence of light cone in condensed matter physics was discovered by by Elliot Leap and Derek Robinson for quantum spin systems and lattices. And this uh, this bar this called Leap Robinson bounds, and they played decisive role in context of as diverse as quantum information science, condensed matter theory, and high energy physics. In, in, the, in the last 20 or so years, starting with work of Hastings, Nachtingale, and, and uh, Sims, and Isert, the Lee Robinson approach was uh, greatly improved and uh, applications vastly expanded. However, with an exception of a few, uh, special, uh, few special models, uh, Lee Robinson, uh, which I will describe uh, uh, later, uh, approach did not did not uh, did not work well in the foreign bounded interactions, and in particular for quantum bosonic uh, bo uh, bosonic uh, lattice gases. So for for the bosons, we there's the there's the following there the following results for bosons. So the so not, again, Nachtingala, Ras, Schlein, and Sims proved uh, the Robinson bounds for certain oscillator systems with unbounded interactions. Then in this in this work in this work, first max, a maximal speed bound on on uh, bo uh, Bose ha uh, Hubbard model for initial Hubbard model for initial states that have no particle outside of a fixed region was proven uh, by this by these people. Then in Wang and Hazard, Lee Robinson bounds for with the n dependent velocity, with the latest result uh, given velocity scaling a square root of n, uh, was uh, was given in this by this work in this work, and uh, the the most recent work by, well, the two two most recent works were. Were give uh, were proved almost linear light cone for special initial initial states there local perturbations of stationary stationary states such as fine very very uh, strong uh, ex exponential constraints on the local particle density and in this work it was proven linear light cone was for commutators tested against state like that. So these results leave out a wide field of bosonic quantum lattice gases, since this naturally come with unbound interactions. So in the remaining, I didn't ask how much time I have. Maybe my time is over. Well, you have uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I see, okay, good. So I, in, in the, I probably will need less, but I, I will. I want to sketch the uh, main idea of the proof. So to co to control the time evolution, we control time evolution by means of new class of observables, which we call, well, we variously call propagation identifier observables and something else, which are recursive monotonic along quantum trajectories. So uh, we define the this uh, to start to define these observables. I'll define, first I will start with a smooth cutoff function, smooth uh, indicator function for the interval zero, zero uh, to infinity chi. And, and I define chi sub t of x, 
by this formula. So this is a distance d sub x of x is the distance of x to the set to the set x. And s is a large adiabatic parameter. Essentially, it's uh, one of the perp one of the Go, uh, one of the tasks of these parameters is kind of bookkeeping to keep kind of a uh, track of uh, various uh, powers and various expansions. So this PO, the, the propagation indicator observables, is a normalized second quantization of chi sub t. Chi sub t here. So this is standard uh, second quantization and we divide it by total number of particles. So physically chi, chi sub t is smeared out localized relative number of number, uh, number operator, measuring fraction of particles in uh, uh, outside of light cone X. So when this is greater than zero, then we are sitting, when this is greater than zero, we're sitting outside of the cone, of the light cone by amount by amount s. By amount s. Okay. And so we want to show that uh, we'll, I want to uh, formulate this recursive monotonicity of this of this observable. So I'll, I'll define the Heisberg derivative. So a derivative along the quantum flow. And with the property that uh, expectation, derivative of expectation of, of the observable A of T is, is expectation of the Heisenberg derivative. Okay, then recursive monotonicity of chi sub T is from, uh, is, uh, from uh, is result of this theorem, which is essentially in this, in, in, uh, in this, uh, inequality. So this inequality tells me that if given, given chi this uh, with the set chi in a, in, a, in a set chi capital, X capital, right? So it, this is again, this is smooth out characteristic function of the, of the some positive interval, arbitrary positive interval. Then there, so given this chi, there exists constant and chi wiggle of, from the same set the same properties from the same set such that you have this, we have this in the world. So this is total number of particles in, uh, in lambda. So let, let's see what, what enters in this inequality. So this is, uh, this is Heisenberg, Heisenberg derivative as defined here. So der derivative along the flow. Uh, here's, uh, here's derivative of, uh, Quantization of uh, derivative of chi, of chi, quantization of chi prime. The coefficient here is negative if velocity v is less than velocity. So maybe I was wrong. It should be negative. Uh, maybe there's uh, one moment. So maybe the v uh, sorry v should be greater v greater than v maximum, right? So this is this is uh, this is negative. And then we have uh, remainder terms. So the first term is looks it's a little bit has a better by one power better decay, but it's of the same form of the same form as the as this one as the main term. And then you have a you have a term with arbitrary decay. So p here is arbitrary. So the the idea here is that the we can iterate this inequality. First, we integrate it out, integrate it, and then we can iterate by, say, taking a very rough estimate for chi wiggle. Start, starting with a rough estimate for chi wiggle, we get a better estimate for chi using this inequality. Then we use this estimate again for chi wiggle because they are the same from the same class. I can, I can kind of, I can use. Right, so I can, so if this is my, my recursive, rec recursive inequality, monotonicity inequality, let's say, I plug here on in, in input, I get chi wiggle and from output is chi. Right. 
So I started with a rough estimate for chi regular, get a, not a good, much a better estimate for chi. Then I put this better estimate for chi I use for chi regular and so forth. And I can, I can use this, iterate this procedure many times, as long as uh, to, get, to get to this decay as, as long as I, I'm below this decay as uh, one over SP, S to the power of P. Okay. And, but P is arbitrary, so I can get arbit this way arbitrary decay. So the advantage of this, no, it's very hard to construct monotonic, as we know well, it's hard to construct monotonic, monotonic uh, quantities. So the, so we have entropy, we have other things, but the, so because mo mostly such quantities are global. Here they, uh, they are localized, but we have to, so to, to, have, a, to have estimates on the, to have estimates on the propagation, we have to localize this property. For lo localizing them, uh, we pay the price by, by these two, two error to remain their estimates. But as long as one error is arbitrary small and the other error is self-similar, we can use this as, as the normal, as the usual, usual uh, monotonicity. Okay, so this is uh, this is actually this inequality is enough to prove the Robinson bound and, and many consequences like existence of dynamic uh, dynamics and the uh, uh, finite speed of propagation of states and so forth so information, but but for restricted uh, set of states. So with a state of set of states with certain localization, so we're uh, density is not uniform. It, it cannot be uniform. It has to be very small at some places, in the intermediate places. To go to go to the our full result to the transport in our, for arbitrary densities, we have to do. We have to go to the second generation of of uh, propagation indica indicator uh, observable. So we take now we take a function. Of the previous of the previous observable, now the new observable is a of t is a function of the, and f is again f is a similar indicator function. It could be different, but it's sim. It could be any monotonic function. It's just di more difficult to estimate. And then we prove a similar recursive monotonicity estimates for for this one, and then it, we iterate instead of iterating only chi, we iterate a pair, f and chi. And this way we get a light, a light cone estimates for the microscopic particle transport. Okay, so let me say a few words about the kind of disc, uh, discuss very briefly this, this proof. So as I mentioned before, that the, of course, monotonic properties are, quantities play a huge role in, in physics in various, in, in various uh, areas of physics. But uh, so here, this I think that uh, this certain a new certain a new uh, element here is the fact that we is monotonicity up to recursive and small error terms, and this allows uh, this recursivity allows allows iterative bootstrapping, and so it gives ex exactly the same result, the same consequence as the same consequences as a, as a strict monotonicity and relaxing monotonicity uh, enables us to flexibly design this propagation indicator observables that capture the key dynamical information about uh, localization, localization of particles at, uh, in space time. So let me uh, proceed to the summary. Maybe I'm kind of a, so, so in in uh, in this talk, I presented some earlier state of the art and re some recent resu results in quantum dynamics, in n particle quantum mechanics, non-relativistic QED, and condensed matter physics. I also formulated open problems and discussed main ideas 
uh, in the in the recent proof uh, proof of the existence of light cone in the Bose Hubbard uh, model of condensed matter physics. Thank you for your attention. So thank you very much, Michael, for a beautiful talk. And I'm going to stop your screen sharing for the moment and so we can see each other and have a discussion. Who would like to start the discussion? I see John McHale is, un is unmuted. Did you have a comment? Uh, yes, but I didn't necessarily want to have the first comment, but now I have to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, it's a question about uh, the middle part of your talk, non-relativistic quantum electrodynamics. There was the theorem uh, with this uh, uh, sort of assumption that the expected value of the photon particle number stays bounded over time. Uh, right. Now I have some doubts that this can be true in full generality. So here is a, a slightly different model, which is just a single electron charged coupled to the electromagnetic field in a, in a realistic way as quantum electrodynamics uh, commands. And there we know that there is the infrared problem, which means that over time, an ever larger number of ever soft, softer photons is generated. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, would go against uh, uh, this uh, hypothesis. Now one can of course say, this is not the model because the model is an atom and, uh, and if it is neutral, then it is not charged and the problem doesn't arise. However, in, in the state space, there is also the scenario uh, uh, that the atom ionizes and there is a free electron out there and then the problem is back. And so that's why I think in general, it, it is uh, uh, not true, this hypothesis. And, and one more last thing to this effect, you mentioned the early result of uh, uh, Fröhlich, Schleim, and perhaps there was somebody else, uh, uh, were you part of it? I, I forgot. Uh, in any event, uh, there uh, there was no such uh, such hypothesis, uh, but the result was true because the energy range in which the result was claimed was below the ionization threshold, and so that problem couldn't occur. Okay. So I wonder okay. whether whether you have something to comment on that. Yeah. So first of all, maybe my. Uh... I, I was not very clear. So this con conjecture hypothesis, open problem was for Rayleigh scattering below ionization threshold. Okay. Right. Now results of Dierzinski, Gerard and Froelich, uh, Froelich uh, Grisimer, Schlein, they have massive photons. So there's no problem of the photon cloud. I see, yes. Then there's energy bounds number of photons. <clears throat> so for finite energy, you have a finite number of average number of photons. So it's not photons, it's a massive particles. Thank you. But you're, you're absolutely true, right. So I should have been much more clear that the, all, this, all this part was below ionization threshold for Rayleigh skater. For Compton scattering, for other scattering, the, the whole thing is widely open. There's no even conditional, very conditional results do not exist. Outside, again, there's a work of uh, Froelich, Griezmann, and Schlein about with the massive photons, and then they, they can do it. Well, I see many old friends here who've worked on these problems. I'm sure that there are many comments. Please turn on your video and speak.
Sorry, I was interrupted by a phone call. Well, if there are no further comments, then I'd like to thank Michael again for a very provocative and interesting talk. Okay, thank you, Arthur, for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, I look forward to hearing the new results about proving the hypothesis of those right. conditions. Yeah. Elliot, maybe you have some comment. No, I, I think very nice talk. Very nice talk, Michael. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So see you next week. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody, and thanks for coming. Thank you.